Hi, and welcome to another of our videos on Gwent Archives. I'm Rhiannon, and in this video we will be going behind the scenes. You can find Gwent Archives at the General Offices in Ebervale. Uh, the General Offices were built in around 1915-1916, and housed the offices of the Ebervale Steelworks until its closure in around 2002. So, we are currently stood in the extension of the archives. So Gwent Archives moved to the general offices from Cumbran in 2011. And part of the renovation work of the general offices was the addition of an extension which sympathetically wraps around the north wing of the building. So just through the windows here, uh, you can see our research room. Now, the extension houses uh, our strong rooms, our conservation studio, our isolation room, and a workroom where staff can work on our collections and making them available to the public. So, we are going to make our way down this corridor to strong room one, and I'll talk a bit about how we can store our records and then we'll be going to conservation and I'll explain a bit about how we care for our records as well. Okay, and here we are at Strong Room 1. So, welcome to Strong Room 1. So, our strong rooms are where we store our original documents. We have three strong rooms in all, and across those rooms we have roughly five miles worth of shelving, which means an awful lot of documents. So, the strong rooms are designed to utilise as much space as possible, so the majority of our shelving is movable. You can see with the handles here. So strong room one is where we keep our regularly requested records, items such as maps, photographs, plans, school records, hospital records and workhouse records to name a few. All of our strong rooms are humidity and temperature controlled and this discourages things such as dust, mould and pests such as silverfish. All of our records are individually packaged, um, either in acid-free boxes or in acid-free paper. This creates a, a micro-environment and helps to protect the records from dust and mould spores, insects and temperature fluctuations, and fire and water damage. All of our records have a reference number that is linked to a shelf reference and a barcode. These are then sorted into a location database, which helps the archivist then to easily find the records that you request in the research room. So yeah, this is Strong Room 1, and we are now going to make our way over to Strong Room 2. So, welcome to Strong Room 2. Um, it is a little bit bigger than Strong Room 1 with higher stacks. Um, so, in Gwent Archives, um, our collections start in the 12th century and go up to the early 21st century. And this Strong Room um, holds records for either end of that timeline. So, in this room, you will find our older records which tend to be written on parchment, um, so they tend to be in Latin, and they tend to feature some challenging handwriting, shall we say. Um, you will also find some restricted material, um, so those are records that are created within the last hundred years, and those will be covered by GDPR. Um, if you visit our website at www.gwentarchives.gov.uk um, you will find policy documents there which will cover the documents affected, how long they are restricted for and ways you can access them. So uh, this strong room is slightly different to the first one. 
um, in that through this door at the end there um, is a buffer zone which goes around the room. So the buffer zone maintains a steady temperature that means that the strong room will be less affected by large temperature changes taking place outside. Um, because as you can imagine, we need to keep everything at a steady temperature. Now, the strong rooms are what we would describe as passive conservation. So we are now going to go to our conservation studio where we will learn about active conservation. So, welcome to our conservation studio. This is where our conservator actively works on our records to ensure that everything is properly packaged and in a good state of repair for researchers to handle in the research room. Now, this room is split into two halves, a wet side and a dry side, and the conservator will work on different processes in each half. I'm going to explain just a few key features of the room um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the work that she does. And here we have the large sink, um, which the conservator uses to clean the documents. Now you would think that water and all documents don't mix, but using a very slow, very careful process, she is able to remove any embedded dirt in the document fibres, and at the same time can neutralise any acid that's been introduced by the paper making process. And here we have the map wall, and you can see what our conservator is currently working on. So some of our maps are backed onto linen or silk, which unfortunately can damage the map in the long term. So to fix this, the conservator will remove the old backing and will create a new archive-friendly acid-free backing on the map wall. Once the map has been cleaned, it will be mounted onto the new backing on the map wall and the conservator will then carry out any additional repairs that need to be done to the map itself. The conservator will also work on repairing wax seals and book bindings. Um, she'll also work on a range of material such as parchment, paper and glass plate negatives. Um, she'll clean documents using smoke sponges and brushes and will ensure that everything is packed into acid-free boxes or paper. Her work is varied, um, usually with several works in progress at once. Um, tasks such as document cleaning can take up to a day, whereas replacing the backing of a map can take up to three months. Um, we hope you've enjoyed uh, our quick tour behind the scenes. If you have any questions, um, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you. Bye.